in the last video we already had an introduction about the structural hazard structural hazards are caused by structural dependencies or hardware dependencies in pipelining whenever we try to execute more than one instruction parallelly if more than one instruction tries to access the same hardware resource at the same time it lead to a conflict or issue called structural hazard According to the kind of data path that we have discussed in the processing unit, suppose we have a four-stage pipeline implementation with four stages, fetch stage, decode stage, execute stage, and write back stage. In the fetch stage, we fetch the instruction from the memory. In the decode stage, we decode that instruction and load the option. If the options are already available in the processor register, then it's fine. Otherwise, we need to load the option from the memory to the processor register. In the execute stage, we execute the operation corresponding to the instruction on the data within the processor register and store the results back to the register. In the write back stage, we store the data from the registers to the memory. So here we can see with this kind of pipeline stage organization, our fetch stage, decode stage and the write back stage depend on the same hardware resource memory. Also, we have three stages depending on the same register files and the execute unit depends on the ALU resource and in the fetch stage itself, if we are updating the program counter with the help of ALU, then the fetch stage also depends on ALU. And in addition to this, there are many hardware resources used by each stage and also there are chances for dependencies. And this is our pipeline stage organization. With this kind of organization, if we try to execute instruction, what happens? In clock cycle 1, our first instruction I1 is being fetched. In clock cycle 2, I1 moves to the decode stage and I2 will be fetched. In the next clock cycle, if everything goes on in normal way, I1 is in the execute unit, I2 in the decode unit, and I3 in the fetch unit. In the fourth clock cycle, I1 in the write unit, I2 in the execute unit, I3 in the decode unit, and I4 is being fetched. Now consider our clock cycle too. Here our instruction I1 is being decoded and the operands are loaded from the memory. At the same time, instruction I2 is being fetched from the memory. Thus, both these instructions are trying to access the same hardware resource memory at the same time. This hardware dependency will lead to an issue or conflict called structural hazard. And here the hazard is caused because we have one stage accessing the memory for the instruction and we have one another stage accessing the memory for data. And in following clock cycles also, we can see the same issue. One instruction accessing the memory for fetching the instruction and one instruction accessing the memory for the data. Now consider our clock cycle 4. Here we have our instruction I3 in the decode stage and the instruction I1 in the write stage. In the decode stage, the data is loaded from the memory and in the write back stage, data is written to the memory. Again, we can see we have two instructions trying to access the same hardware resource memory at the same time. And here one stage is accessing the memory for data, the other stage is also accessing the memory for data. So these are the two cases of hazard that can happen with this kind of organization with respect to memory. And the hazard can be caused by other hardware resources as well. Consider here one instruction is in the fetch unit and another instruction is in the execute unit. In the fetch unit itself, if you are trying to update the program counter with the help of ALU, then if both these instructions happen to use the ALU at the same time, then a structural hazard can occur. 
also if more than one instruction try to access the same register file then also hazard can occur now we'll be focusing on memory so how can we resolve the problem of structural hazard caused by the dependency on memory one simple easy and local solution for the hazard is stalling the pipeline our first instruction i1 can be fetched decoded executed and written back and can be processed out in the fourth clock cycle as usual now coming to next instruction can we fetch the instruction in the second clock cycle if there are mechanisms to detect the hazard then can, it can be identified that fetching i2 in the second clock cycle can lead to a structural hazard that we will stall the pipeline or we'll wait for one cycle and fetch the instruction in the next cycle at cycle 3 again decoding that instruction in the fourth cycle also can lead to a structural hazard thus again we stall the pipeline or we wait for one cycle and decode it in the next cycle so with this kind of approach the occurrence of structural hazard can be avoided and here we are considering only the case of hazard with respect to memory so this is an easy and low cost solution but see here we are getting the first instruction out in the fourth clock cycle and from then on in every three cycles we are getting one instruction out we are implementing pipeline with an expectation of getting one instruction out in one clock cycle so even though pipeline stalling is an easy and low cost solution to the hazard, blindly following the method of pipeline stalling can affect the performance of pipeline. So to avoid the structural hazard, first of all, the pipeline structure itself should be properly organized. So in the next video, we shall see how the pipeline stages are properly organized or how the pipeline stages can be properly organized by which we can avoid the structural hazard caused with respect to memory.